learn what is a circle and how to measure a circle. Look, Vandana. This is a tractor. Are you seeing this for the first time? No, I have seen a tractor before, but I am seeing it so close for the first time. What is so shocking then? I am shocked to see its tires. Look, they are almost as big as us. Yes, they are very big. Compared to them, the tires of our bicycles look so small. And look at the tires of the scooter. They are smaller than that of our bicycle. Yes, but the tractor also has two types of tires, and the front tire is smaller than the tire at the rear. You noticed one thing? We saw four different sizes of tires, but all are in the shape of a circle. Yes. You are right, Neha. All are circular. But how will we know how big or small they are from each other? Why not ask Sir in class today? Yes, let's ask Sir. Sir, I have to ask something. Please ask. Sir, I want to know how is a circle measured. I will definitely tell you. But first, tell me why do you want to know this? So today we saw tractor, bicycle, and scooter tires in the school parking lot. We have understood that all tires are circle shaped, and there is a difference in their size. But to find out the difference, we should know how to measure those tires. So we want to learn how to measure a circle. Oh, so this is the thing. Before measuring any circle. You have to understand what a circle is, sir. A round figure is called a circle. Yes, but what is a round figure? What does this mean? Let me explain. Firstly, I will show you the wheel of a bicycle. It is round. That is, in the shape of a circle. Let's make a simple drawing of this wheel so that it is easy to understand. Now. The first thing you need to know about a circle is that it is a closed shape because it has a boundary on all sides. See, we cannot call this figure a circle. The dot you see in the middle of the circle is the center of the circle. There are many lines going from the center to the boundary of the circle, and we need to know that all these lines are equal in length. Okay, sir. We understood these things about a circle, but what is the definition of a circle? If you write properly what you have understood, you will get the definition of a circle. Look, circle is a closed figure in which all the points located in it are at equal distance from the center. Sir, now we know the definition of circle, but we have not learned how to measure it. As soon as I tell you the properties of a circle, you will learn about measuring it. Sir, then tell us. The first property of a circle is the center. The dot inside the circle, which lies exactly in the middle of the circle, is called the center of the circle. And all the circles have only one center. The second property of a circle is the diameter. What is a diameter? If we draw a straight line joining both sides of the circle in such a way that it goes through the center of the circle, then that line will be called the diameter of the circle. This means that we have to measure its diameter. To measure the circle, if we measure the diameter of all the wheels, then we can tell the difference between the wheels. Absolutely right. But before that, you should know another property of a circle. So, what is a radius? The distance from the center of the circle to the boundary is called radius. It is half of the diameter, so it can also be called half diameter. That means if we measure the distance from the center of the wheels to the boundary, then we will know their radius. Yes, and we can also tell the difference between wheels when we know the radius of different wheels. Absolutely right. 
Now you have understood how to measure a circle. So, now you can measure the wheels you were asking about. Today we learned a circle is a closed figure in which all the points are at the same distance from the center. The straight line passing through the center of the circle which meets both sides of the circle is called the diameter of the circle. The distance from the center of the circle to the boundary is called radius. To measure a circle, the radius of circle is measured. The radius of a circle is half its diameter. The diameter of a circle is twice its radius. Circle and its Properties Part 2 Today we will learn what is the relation between the radius and circle. Remember what did sir tell us about circle yesterday? Yes, I remember it well. Circle is a closed shape where all the points located on it are at an equal distance from the center. Do you remember what the center of circle is? Yes, I remember. The point inside the circle which lies in the middle of a circle is called the center of circle. Now can you talk about diameter? A straight line that passes through the center of the circle and meets both sides of the circle is called the diameter of circle. Now remains the radius. You tell me about it. The distance from the center of the circle to the boundary is called radius. Now tell me what will we measure if we have to measure the circle. That's easy. You can measure either radius or diameter but radius will be easier to measure because it is smaller than diameter. Yes, it is not only small but it is half. Remember, sir told that the radius is diameter divided by 2. It means diameter is equal to 2 times the radius. Let's uh, measure something. Let's measure these four tires. Then we will tell sir. Which tire should we measure first? Let's measure the tire of our bicycle first. Okay. Hmm, so we have to measure its radius. Yes, and the radius means the distance between the center and the boundary. Here is the center of the wheel of the cycle. But which point on the boundary of the bicycle do we measure the distance from this center? There are many points in it. Measure to any point. The measurement will be equal because the center is at an equal distance from the boundary of the circle. Right, let's measure up to this point. Okay, now let's measure the distance between these two points using a scale. Radius of the wheel of bicycle is 9 inches. Let's now measure its diameter as well. Hey, why do we need to measure it? We can find it only by measuring the radius. How? Look, the radius is also called the half of diameter. This means that the diameter will be twice the radius. Got it? Oh, that means if we multiply the radius by 2, then the measure of diameter will be known. Yes. Radius is 9 inches and multiplied by 2, it will be 18 inches. This means that the diameter of the wheel of our bicycle is 18 inches. Yes, why not measure the diameter of this wheel so that we know that our calculation is correct. Ok, we will also measure the diameter. To measure the diameter, we have to draw a straight line joining both sides in such a way that the line goes through the center. Now let's measure this too. See, the diameter is also 18 inches on the scale. Yes! Now that we have measured the wheels of the bicycle, why not measure the rest of the wheels as well? Yes, let's measure all the wheels. Here is the wheel of the scooter. This is the front wheel of the tractor. And this is the tractor's rear wheel. Now let's find the center for all. Here is the center for all wheels. 
Now measure the distance from the center to the point on the boundary. Now look, the radius of the wheel of the scooter is 5 inches. This means its diameter will be 5 inches multiplied by 2 meaning 10 inches. Now look, the radius of the front wheel of the tractor is 8 inches. This means its diameter is 16 inches. And now it's the turn of the largest wheel of the tractor. Its radius is 15 inches. This means its diameter is 30 inches. We took the measurement of all the wheels and now let us tell sir. Let's go. Today we learned to measure a circle, its radius is measured. The diameter of the circle is twice its radius. Diameter is equal to radius multiplied by 2. Radius is half the diameter. Radius is equal to diameter divided by 2. Circle and its properties, part 3. Today we will learn what is the relation between radius and circle. Neha and Vandana, did you get some success in measuring the wheels you were talking about yesterday? Yes sir, we measured all four wheels. So to measure the wheels, which properties of the circle did you measure? Sir, we measured the radius of all the wheels. Then let us see whatever you have measured. Here you are sir. Yes. Your measurements look right. Which wheel had the largest circle? The rear wheel of the tractor had the largest circle. And which was smaller, front wheel of the tractor or the bicycle? This will be a little difficult to tell. Just like you have told about the rear wheel of the tractor, that it was the largest, the same way you can also tell about both these wheels. So we had seen all the wheels, so we were able to tell that rear wheel of the tractor is the largest. I thought that you were looking at the measurement of these radius. Sir, how can we tell whether a circle is small or big by measuring the radius? We can definitely say, I'll explain, what is a radius? Sir, the distance from the center to the boundary is called radius. Absolutely right. And if we increase the radius, the distance from center to the boundary will increase. Yes, sir. See, this is a circle whose radius is this. Now, we will increase this radius. And look, we have now got a big circle. Now, if we increase this radius further, we get an even bigger circle. Now, if we decrease this radius, then we will get a small circle. Larger the radius, the larger the circle and smaller the radius, the smaller the circle. Now I can tell whether the front wheel of the tractor is bigger or the wheel of the bicycle. Please tell. Sir, the wheel of a bicycle is bigger because its radius is 9 inches, which is more than the radius of the wheel of the tractor, which is 8 inches. This means when we know the radius or diameter of a circle, we can tell whether it is big or small without looking at the circle. Yes, absolutely correct. So, why are there so many radius in the circle on the wall behind you? Which one? Oh, this one. This is Ashok Chakra. But you are right that it is in the shape of a circle. And there are many lines joining the center to the boundary. So, they can be called a radius. But what is your question? So my question is, why does it have so many radius? A circle can have only one radius. No, you got it wrong. Tell me what is the radius? Sir, radius is the distance from the center to any point on the boundary of the circle. Absolutely correct. And how many points can there be on a circle? There can be many. Absolutely right. And lines can be drawn from the center to all those points. Now tell me, what will all these lines be called? Sir, we will call it a radius only. Absolutely correct. Like this, there can be several radius in one circle. Like in the Ashok Chakra. 
and also in the wheel of our bicycle. Now I understand, sir. Today we learned when the length of the radius is greater, a large circle is formed. As the length of the radius decreases, a small circle is formed. And there are many radius in one circle. Construction of Circle Part 1 Today we will learn different ways to construct a circle. What are you making? I am trying to make a round figure, but I am just not able to. Oh, your method is wrong. Let me show you the right way to make a round figure. Show me. Why have you taken out this stiffen box? I will tell you, but first you tell me, what is the shape of this stiffen box? This stiffen box is round. Yes, now I'll keep this on a paper. And I'll trace its boundary with a pencil. Now let us lift the tiffin box. Look, a round figure is created. Okay, now I understand. What other objects can we use to make a round figure? Please tell me. Ring. A ring is also round. The ring will make a very small round figure. To make a big round figure, we can use a plate. If we have to make a bigger round shape, what can we use? We can make a bigger round shape using the tire of a cycle. What if we have to make an even bigger round shape? To make an even bigger round shape, we will need a long wooden stick. How will you make it with a stick? Let me show you. Look, I am standing here. As I turn around, the stick will make a round shape on the ground. Wow! I didn't think of this method, but how will we make round shapes bigger than this? What is the need to make a bigger round shape? Come, I will show you. Why did you bring me to the football ground? To show you this round shape. Oh, this is very big. But how was this made? Even I want to know the same thing. A thread and nail is used to make this. Nail and thread? Yes, nail and thread. How, sir? It is very easy. You go to the park. I'll come there with a nail and thread. Sir, make a round shape and show us. I'll definitely show you. But first you should know that in the language of mathematics, it is called a circle, not a round. Circle? Yes. Now see... How a circle is made. For this, we will first tie the thread to the nail. Then we will hammer the nail at one place in the ground. Now we will hold the front end of the thread firmly and walk around the nail to create a circle. We can use a stick or any other sharp object to make the circle on the ground. See, a complete circle is made. Using this method, we can make big round shapes. Don't call it a round shape, it's a circle. Oh yes, circle. Yes, we can make a very big circle using this method. And in your football field, big circles are made this way. Using this method, we can make circles of every size, big and small. Now we will always keep a nail and thread with us. This means that you have not been taught how to use a compass in the classroom. Compass? What is that? Look, this is a compass. It is a tool which helps us make circles. How, sir? Please show us how it works. Of course. Look at the compass. One side has a sharp pointed end and the other side holds the pencil. The pencil is fixed in such a way that the writing end of the pencil and the pointed end of the compass are on the same line. Now pull apart the compass. Keep the pointed end on the paper and make sure that it does not move from its place while making the circle. Now we turn the pencil end on the paper. The pencil starts creating a circle on the paper. Once the circle is complete, 
Remove the compass oh, from the wow. paper. Oh wow! This is an amazing tool. We can easily make a circle with this. Now we know four methods to draw a circle, isn't it? Which four methods? I told only two. One is by tracing the edge of round objects. The second is by holding something that can make a mark and then making a line around you. The third method is with the help of nail and thread. And fourth by using a compass. Good. Now you go to your class and I'll go to my class. Construction of Circle Part 2 Today we will learn how to find the center of a circle shaped paper. What are you making? I am trying to make a spinning top with paper and a stick. Yes, I had read in a book that to make a spinning top you can cut a paper in the shape of a circle then put a stick right through its center and then spin it. So make it. Are you facing any problem? The problem I am facing is that I am using a bangle to cut a paper circle. But how do I find the center of this circle? Please tell me. This can be done easily. Give me the paper. I will do it. See, I take the paper and fold it in half. Now I straighten it out. Look at the line that is going through the middle of the paper. Now I fold it again and fold this half into half again. Now when we open it, we see two lines crossing each other at a point. This point is the center of the circle. Wow! This is a great way to find the center of the circle. Let's fix this stick in the center and spin the top. But you could have done this with a compass. In a circle made with a compass, it's easier to find the center. I could not find my compass and so I had to draw a circle like this. No problem, I have a compass. Let's make spinning tops of different sizes. Look, there is a mark in the center after making it with a compass. Now it has become easy for us to make a spinning top. Now we will make many spinning tops. This is going to be fun. Let us spin our tops. Vandana, come to the garden. I have to draw a circular mark around this tree. Why, Mummy? When a circular pit is made around a tree, the water given to it remains around the tree and does not flow out. See, just like it has been made around the rest of the trees. Okay, Mummy, we will help you. Actually, I have to go and cook. Will you both make a circle around it? Yes, Auntie. We will make it. Thank you, Neha. Let's go and get the compass. What for? To make a circle around the tree. What else? The compass we have is small. How can we make such a big circle with it? Then how will we make it? With a nail and thread? Yes, we can make it with a nail and thread. Let's go and get a nail and thread. Wait. I think we will not need a nail. Only a thread will suffice. How will we make it only with a thread? We won't make it only with a thread, but with the tree and thread. How will we make a circle with the tree and thread? See, we use the nail so that it stays fixed in one place. While we turn the thread around it to make a circle. Absolutely right. Here we have a tree which will stay fixed. Just tie a thread around it and move it around the tree. A circle will be made. Oh yes! Let's make it then. A 
A circle has been made. Now let's show it to mummy. Oh, I forgot to tell you how to make a circle. Hey, you made it yourself. How? It was easy, mummy, using a thread. Oh wow! You both are getting older and smarter. Today we learned that useful objects can be made using the center point of a circle. To find the center of a circle-shaped paper, it has to be folded in half and then half again. A circle can be used to make fun things such as a spinning top and useful things like a pit around a tree. You can also try and find useful and fun items around you where a circle has been used. Construction of Circle Part 3 Today we will learn why is it important to have knowledge of the center and radius to make a perfect circle. What are you doing Ayushman? Preparations for the sports day are going on and I have been given the duty to put flags in the center of these circles. The flag should be placed in the center of the circle. But you have not put any flag in the center of any circle. Look carefully. All flags are in the center of the circles. All are placed inside them. Oh, there are many points inside a circle. This does not mean that all points will be considered as a center of the circle. Then what do we consider as the center of the circle? You don't have to assume the center. The center is already there. Do you remember the definition of a circle given in our book? No. I will tell you. The point inside a circle that lies right in the middle is called the center of a circle. Okay. This means that the center is not just anywhere in the circle, but right in the middle of the circle. Yes. And if we draw several lines from the center to different points on the boundary of the circle, then all those lines will be of the same length. Whereas if we draw lines from the point where the flags has been placed, they will all be of different lengths. Oh, now I have understood the mistake. Oh, now I will have to place the flags again. This time place them in the center, else you will have to do this again and again. What are you making, Riyansh? Sir has given me the duty to make circles. The flags will be placed inside them. Yes, I saw Ayushman placing the flags. But the circle you are making is not right. Why? What is wrong in it? Show me how you make a circle. Only then I can tell you what the mistake is. Okay. I am making it the same way Sir taught us in class. See. Stop! What happened? While making a circle, the radius should remain the same. You cannot change the radius. Meaning? This means that the thread we have tied to the nail is tied so that the radius of the circle can be determined. Its length cannot change. When we hammer the nail in one place and pull the other end of the thread, hold it firmly and move it around the nail, then the whole circle gets created. Okay, but what is wrong with the circle I have made? Look, in this circle, we will make different lines from the center to the boundary. See, all radii are of different lengths, whereas they should be the same length. A circle cannot have radii of different lengths. While drawing a circle, the radius should be kept the same. Oh, now I understood. But I'll have to make all these circles again. Vandana is happy today because she helped Ayushman and Riyansh. She told Ayushman that a circle can have only one center and told Riyansh that while making a circle, 
its radius cannot be decreased or increased. If you pay attention in your class, you will not have to repeat your work like Riyansh and Ayushman.